Please welcome Senior Vice President of Pandora, Lizzie Widhelm. now a reality for me, old lady glasses. Um, <laughs> some of you are giggling, you know when it happens, all of a sudden you're like, fuck, I can't see anymore, how did that happen? <laughs> um, <laughs> all of us over 40. So, hello, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I'm gonna do 15 minutes of fun stuff and we're gonna have a great panel up here. Um, and then I think there's cocktails, so get focused, right? So I'm gonna talk about the power of audio, but before I get started, I'm gonna do a little crowd participation, which means you have to close your eyes. So everybody close your eyes, and you're not closing your eyes, busted. And think about the sound of your child's voice, or a song that you remember from your first date, or a friend that you spoke to this morning. Now open your eyes. Now think about audio as an ad format. When was the last time you did that? For me, daily. For many of you, probably less so. Based on today's consumer, audio is a more powerful medium than ever before. And today I'll tell you why I believe that and show you some examples of what marketers are doing to harness uh, this really powerful medium. Yes. So, the attention economy, everybody throws this around. I have a love-hate relationship with this. As a consumer, I sort of love the fact that I get to choose what I want, when I want it, right? But the supply of my time has not changed forever, right? We still only have 24 hours in the day. And so marketers are stressed with the challenge that they have to now compete for your time with advertising, which frankly most of us don't like most ads, so that's a really tough problem for them, with all of this other great content and all of these great content creators and apps and all sorts of fun stuff. So given this insight, why is audio so powerful? Well, we are in this earbud generation. You saw it on your way here. You are a part of it. I don't know if any of us are buying those earbuds that we're all going to lose for $169. But we are all a part of this, and the entire business is innovating around us to help us listen to more and more audio. And what are we listening to? 75% of us choose music as our top source for audio entertainment. It's not just that as a brand, you should have a music strategy anymore. If you are interested in reaching Americans today, you absolutely should have an audio strategy. Not a radio strategy, an audio strategy. So what did it look like a generation ago? It looked a lot like this. Your owned music catalog, terrestrial radio. And what does it look like today? Well, just from a sources standpoint, let's not even talk about what you can listen to. We've got the smartphone delivering us audio. Raise your hand if you've seen the connected refrigerator that I can get audio out of. Thank you. It was at CES last year. You all get extra credit. Um, but there's no shortage. I mean, Alexa, what is she doing in everyone's house right now? I mean, oh, I love how she'll start with a joke in the morning for my three boys. Easy way to get everyone downstairs. But long story short is that we can get audio almost out of any device and more and more as every year goes by. And what we're hearing out of those devices is changing pretty significantly too in terms of the space and what the addressable audience means for you guys as marketers. Streaming radio, yes. I mean, huge change in the space. Pandora is a part of that. I'll talk a little bit about that in terms of share of ear study from Edison. But it's, it's mostly being driven through, of course, personalization and choice. Podcasts are experiencing a huge rise right now. I'm really excited because I love podcasts. I did the deal for Pandora with Serial in This American Life. And I'm passionate about how um, that type of content will bring a lot more advertisers and time spent into the space. So how much time are we spending? It's four hours per day on average. This is a real stat. This is not something I made up. Okay, you can't, I, don't, I think people still do make things up in decks, but this is not one of those stats. <laughs> So that's obviously a huge percentage of our waking hours. And what does that look like in terms of addressable audience? So this is the only boring stuff, and then I'll get to really fun stuff, but it's important to sort of set the stage. Lots of choice, 
AM FM radio still has a significant amount of audience. They do a really good job in, in some respects in terms of local and some of the sports and weather and traffic. But millennials don't really have radios anymore. They definitely don't have them in the home. And when it comes to the in-car experience, they figured out how to get away from that too. We also know that 75% of them don't listen past the first ad in a stop set. And there might be local radio sellers in the room, and we can have it out later at cocktails, but this is a real title change in terms of what uh, the behavior is going to look like for the future and really where the opportunity is, is that it's, it's obviously moving more towards the personalization opportunity in the streaming space. And this is if we just look at AM, FM compared to streaming. Pandora and its ability to personalize and be ubiquitous and effortless is winning the race in the streaming space. It's wildly competitive, in fact, if you follow us, I made some announcements today in the press about the Pandora One subscription changing and we're moving it to Pandora Plus and even our ad supported model is getting all these new features and that is to keep up with the space. There's an uh, incredible amount of competition there, but a really um, you know, interesting thing for everybody to be watching and paying attention to. So there's audience, we've talked about that, I hope I've proven that, but that doesn't really solve your problem, right? Today is about engagement, it's not about where you can find reach. Uh, how do you capture attention? How do you think about creative for mobility? Uh, I have a bunch of really fun audio we're going to hear. We're going to see no video. I know there was a lot of video today. And then we're going to talk about data and how we've seen some advertisers do some really interesting things with that data. So what does the power of audio really mean? Do you want a powerful experience? Just listen. This is what it sounds like to make memories. And to make history. I have a dream to do. This is how you take an audience on a journey. Global Tell Link, prepaid call from. A home appliance salesman named Johnny Cash helped create a new music. And how you give a brand a voice. Tom Odette from Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. This is Adventure. In the War of the Worlds by H.G. West. Master Chief, all hail the country. It's a low growl, flashes of teeth, and the smell of gunpowder. This is personal. Hey, we know how you feel. Our commute used to suck too. So we need an outfit. Yo, Taylor. Happy birthday. I I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. You sacrifice for us. Happy birthday. You're the real MVP. This is the power of audio. So the first best practice to harness what we believe is really the most powerful way to engage audience through audio is the theater of the mind. Each of you heard that 60 second spot and I'm sure there were pieces of it that reminded you of a place that you were, someone you were with, or how old you were when um, that memory is, is in your head. And, and that's the theater of the mind. That's not someone showing you a video and you're going on the journey with them. That's the ability for a creative to get you to play along. You're invested in that ad, and that's a really amazing way of driving engagement. Humanizing media through data. So what do I mean by this? I'm going to give you an example that's a crazy example. It's taking data um, to the nth degree. We um, believe in the power of personalization, but it's, of course, very hard to get every single ad personalized to each individual. But here's an example of something we did. Um, that's Kyle on the left, and that's Jenny on the right, and Kyle wanted to propose to Jenny. And so Kyle reached out to Pandora and said, hey, my girlfriend has this Hyundai Veloster, and it has your app integrated into it, so I can just press a button. Could I get in the car with her, press a button, and we use an audio ad to propose? Genius, right? He's like totally off the hook. It's all pre-scripted, he doesn't have to do anything, just open the ring, kind of love Kyle, very efficient. So here's what it sounded like. Hey, Maggie. Yes, you, Ms. Marguerite Frugé. Hello. You're probably wondering why Kyle is sitting here with you, listening to Pandora, and acting kind of nervous. 
or shall we say, overwrought, titillated, exultant even? Yes, we know you are his personal thesaurus, so you can explain to him what all of that means. But Kyle actually has some choice words for you. In his words, Maggie, I've never met a person as incredible or beautiful as you. Every day I think about how the universe worked in mysterious ways to bring us together by chance, creating a love as strong as ours. You are the most important person in my life, and I want nothing more than to have you by my side for as long as I live. You are my absolute sweetheart, and I know this has been a long time coming, so... So she said yes. And <laughs> that was a really great example of just how human audio uh, you know, can be. And of course, leveraging all the data that you sit on. There is a future where what we see with DCO for display, I believe, can happen for audio. And you could have millions of permutations against device IDs, building audio creative that's that personal. Context and relevancy, no surprise this matters. Here's another great example. And this is great because it reached a mass audience. Huggies came to us and uh, they're dealing with a huge problem. I guess no one's having babies anymore. I'm not one of them, I have too many. But apparently Americans are having less babies. So what do they do? They think about what happens 10 months before you have a baby, and they came to us and said, how do we get romance when going? When you and your lover are listening to that special song, don't you hate ads that ruin the mood? Not with the Huggies baby-making station. We've got all your favorite love hits ad-free. Happy baby making from Huggies. Really cute, right? And it was ad-free. So the entire content experience was a station that hopefully you get your groove on. And um, of course, it had nothing to do with showing more ads about how the diapers worked or whether they leaked or not. So really creative. And lastly is, again, creative storytelling. And um, you know, I sat with some marketers earlier, and it is hard to think about all these platforms and how complicated it has to be to tell all these quality stories. Here's something that's super simple and performed really well. It's with Twix. This is a message from Left Twix, and only Left Twix. Wait, what's that? Is your right speaker broken? That makes sense. Left always works better, like Left Twix. It's cookie and caramel bathed in chocolate. It's all you need That's to- That's enough of that. Who wants to hear about that cookie and caramel bathed in chocolate mumbo jumbo? It's much better cloaked in chocolate. Everyone knows that. And your right speaker isn't broken. Your left one is. Better call IT. Twix, try both and pick a side. So that's hard to hear in this room, but that ad, um, that ad actually, we just coded it really simply from the copy so that right Twix only spoke in your right ear and left Twix only spoke in your left ear. And on a mobile device or even coming out of a laptop, it was super obvious what was happening. And it was just like a really simple play to, again, drive engagement and connect with that consumer. So really fun stuff. I'm running out of time up here and I want to get to the panel, but I want to end with the age-old question, like, does any of this work? Does any of this work? Um, it does. So Taco Bell, great partner of ours, we worked with them uh, during their breakfast campaign, and they had a particular challenge not only to reach an audience of millennials, but to reach millennials that had sort of cut cords, weren't leveraging traditional media, and to create an audio spot that sort of honored the fact that they were maybe you know, disenfranchised from traditional media, or at least the sound of it needed to reflect that sort of defector vibe. I'm a breakfast defector. I'm a breakfast defector. I'm Amanda, and I'm a breakfast defector. People all over America have left their old morning routines for something new. Now Taco Bell is declaring this Cinco de Mayo Breakfast Defector Day. Defector Day. That means the biscuit taco is free for everyone on May 5th, May 5th, May 5th. between 7 and 11 a.m. Come claim your free biscuit taco. Free biscuit taco. Free biscuit taco. Breakfast Defector Day, May 5th. Join, Join us. us. Subject to terms at participating locations in tacobell.com slash rules. One so straightforward, but definitely very specific for an audience. We used a lot of targeting. That ad did not show to all 18 to 34 year olds. And did it perform? Absolutely. 16% lift in product association, which is great. But the most important thing that they were most proud of, we were able to do leveraging audio and on mobile, is that of the visitors that ended up in store, and we leveraged place as the partner and uh, to, to understand location and um, visits into store, 
one in seven of those people came back with no further prompting. So it came back to the store within that 10 day window, which for the quick serve restaurant industry is the holy grail. It's not the first visit, but how often can you get them back, right? So um, I will close with um, three things. You know, rethink status quo when it comes to audio. We have a huge creative services team, and I know that many publishers in the space that are trying to push and, you know, change the way we think about prospective mediums are really here to invest with you as it relates to that. Really think about humanizing creative. It's not just copying a music bed and like that'll work and let's roll it out the door. It just isn't working anymore if you want to see ROI from audio and frankly the opportunity is there to do so much more. And um, understand that audio is like never before, um, never, never so much than before having such a renaissance around driving engagement um, and really connecting and telling stories. So um, that is what I have for you guys today.